the championship flag. So that is something to see. They've got a game this Friday against the Tasmanian Jack Jumpers. And of course, they had their first game last week against the Illawarra Hawks. We'll get to that very shortly. Our special guest in the studio today is new king DJ Ho coming from the Cairns Taipans after a spectacular NBL season last year. G'day, DJ. Welcome to the program. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, do you like car racing? Because I'm coming to you live from... You ever heard of Bathurst, DJ? Uh, I haven't, but while I was waiting <laughs> out in the, in the lobby, I kind of was able to watch some of the car racing. Yeah, so that's where I am for the weekend, which I'm very much looking forward to. Very much looking forward to having a chat with you. How are things going, mate? What's the latest with this shoulder injury? When do we anticipate seeing you back on court? Yeah, um, it's going good. You know, I'm getting healthy, getting stronger. Uh, nothing too serious, more so just precautionary. So it's not a stop and go thing throughout the season. It's just so when I'm healthy, I'll play the rest of the year. Um, looking to hopefully be back on the court within the next two to three weeks. Yeah, good news. Okay, what do you make of the Sydney Kings? You've come, as I said, out of uh, college system in, in the US and then played in some NBA G League teams there won the championship in fact but a year at Cairns and now time in Sydney first of all how have you found Australia and how are you finding old Sydney town yeah man I love it uh, my time last year in Cairns was great um, the city was great the people were great and I can say the same about here at Sydney uh, I will say my apartment here in Sydney is a lot better than it was down in Cairns <laughs> um, but just the overall culture of Australia itself is amazing man the way people how nice people are and how everybody's just so active it seems like everybody wants to go walk or go to the gym it's just a great um environment to be around what have you made of the sydney kings organization obviously they've had incredible success <coughs> almost unprecedented success over the last couple of years so with that comes a fair bit of expectation have you noticed that within the building uh, i would say it's just a high level of professionalism throughout this whole organization um and when you have an org organization built like that it leads to winning and it leads to championships um everybody takes their job serious not just the athletes uh so i mean we have a great staff great assistant coaches new great head coach mahmoud um great gm with cp and then of course, uh, of course the owner paul smith he's very involved and just um, likes coming around just to say hi sometimes, and you rarely see that. So it's, uh, it's just a high-level organization. What have you made of some of your teammates? Um, guys there like Denzel Valentine with great NBA experience, um, young Aussie guys coming through like Alex Tui. Um, who have you gravitated towards out of the Sydney Kings roster? Yeah, no, nah, we have a, a great group of guys, man. Everybody gets along well. Um definitely just getting to know everybody and just seeing different personalities and how um easy it is to connect with everybody uh i would say my closest on the team so far is just denzel and Jalen, because uh um at least me and jay we played together back in the g league and so we had some success there and then zell just hanging out as imports we kind of have all had our um fair share of time together but I get along with everybody on the team. Off the court, though, those are the two guys I hang out with the most. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of the first performance against the Illawarra Hawks? Am I fair in saying I don't think it was the best that the Sydney Kings could play, but a comfortable victory nonetheless? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to notice that how much better we played from the Blitz, even though the Blitz didn't count. But, I yep. mean, you can just see, like, we're starting to understand we're still a new team and it's a completely new system from last year. So even the returning guys from last year are all having to learn stuff new. So, I mean, we've only been together about a month and a half. Um, and we, I think we put up 96 points or something like that. So if that's a bad night for us, <laughs> then we'll be good this year. Yeah, that's right. 96-81, the final scoreline in that one. Uh, Mahmoud abdul Fader got his first victory as the Sydney Kings head coach. We had him in the studio last week. He's got an incredibly infectious and, and positive attitude. What have you found about new coach Mahmood? Yeah, I mean, he's just very intelligent, man. Very positive, like you said. He knows what he's talking about. He knows how to how to coach, how to teach, how to put guys in spots. Um, and his, uh, his style of play is very unique. You rarely see it. 
and he believes in it, which is the, the biggest um, challenge for some coaches. I mean, if you go, if a, another coach goes 0-3 in the blitz with a new style of play, some might scrap it. We doubled down on it and uh, perfected where we were messing up at. So, uh, I mean, I'm excited to play for him. I haven't got to play a full game for him yet, but uh, when I do get out there, I'm going to leave it all on the court. What would you use to describe the NBL? You know, we're very proud of our league here. We know it's not the NBA and it, that a lot of people in the NBL aspire to, to go to the NBA. And, and the Sydney Kings have done that with Xavier Cooks, most notably, of recent times. But as I say, we're very proud of our league. We, we know it's very competitive. We know it's of a high level. You've played in the G League. You've played at high level in college. What, what have you made of the NBL? Um, I love it, man. That's why I came back this year again. Uh, I was really excited to come back. Was I mean, I signed almost right after the last season. So uh, I have nothing but high praise for this league, just the way it's put together and um, the way that it's ran. You know, it's like a, it's like the NBA, but just for Australia. Yeah. Um, it's a great league, man. Great teams, great competition. And it's, I mean, it's nothing to complain about. I, I can't even can't even think of anything honestly um and you see see familiar faces from other high level leagues all they all want to come here and so they do and then when you match up against them it just it makes for better talk and better competition every year yeah what about your own uh, dreams and desires dj uh, obviously nba would be a, a an option and and we've seen that that can happen for the younger players we've seen Older players, more mature players like like Xavier, make their way over to the NBA. Do you have aspirations still to go back to the NBA? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, that is, of course, my main number one goal. Uh, as of far right now, though, I'm focused on just getting healthy. I won't get a shot at the NBA if I can't get healthy and have a successful year. So my first step is getting healthy and then taking it day by day from there. Yeah. How do you find that balance? Because it's really interesting in a, in a team sport, like basketball where the individual can shine but sometimes you've got to put that on the back burner for the benefit of the team have you spoken to Mahmood about that do you have a, a way you approach these things knowing that yes you've got your own personal goals but also there's the goals of the team as well yeah definitely um you just I mean you take it you focus on the little things for yourself but uh when it comes to things like that you focus on winning NBA teams want teams that win um, yeah. That was the main reason, or one of the main reasons, Xavier Cooks got picked up this past year because, I mean, he's, he's a winner. Uh, the way he plays, you can see it every game. He steps on the court, he's trying to win, and he loses, uh, he loses his heart out there every yeah. game. Um, so, of course, you want to you wanna score and do all those things, but you do it at the right time, and it leads to winning. And if you play the right way, good things happen, and that's uh, us how I plan on if I get my shot in the NBA is doing it the right way, playing the right way, and, of course, trying to win as many games as possible. You've seen Kudos Bank Arena as a Taipan. Are you looking forward to seeing it from a King's perspective, knowing that it can be pretty intimidating with 15, 16 and a half thousand people in the house? Ah, uh, No, it's going to be great, man. This this year, uh, hopefully, I have them cheering for me. You know, we had a... Um, uh, what's it, a committee dinner the other night, and I had uh, talked to a lot of fans that were real excited that I had signed with the Kings this year and that they'll get to cheer for me this year instead of like last year, they were all rooting against me. So <laughs> it'll be great having that many people on your side. What's a committee dinner? Do you get in involved with the fans of the club? Uh, it's, it was, uh, um, it's like uh, all the season ticket holders and maybe a couple um, donors or sponsors yep. stuff like that they were all there so it wasn't probably about 50 to 100 people in there and you just go as the, the whole team goes you have a little um little finger food and a couple of us had to get up on stage and talk and so it was just a, a good event to meet some people and take some pictures sign some autographs and yeah yeah very good hey do you like that part of it dj i know that um you know some athletes are more comfortable in doing it you sound like you know exactly what you're doing you know your way around a microphone do you enjoy that part of being a professional athlete i wouldn't say this is my favorite part but <laughs> i understand it comes with a job and i understand that um as a basketball player people uh want to take pictures with you and want 
um, their kids to be around you and want you to talk to their kids. And so I was once a kid that looked up to basketball players, so I get that. And I try to always be as friendly as possible and take picks when asked. Um, yeah, so it's just it's part of it, you know. Yeah, right. Hey, just when you were a kid, who were the who were the posters on the wall? Uh, I grew up in America, so I mean, I had a couple college players that I'm not sure if you know the names, but of course, the NBA players that I loved uh, was Kobe Bryant. Um, he was he was my biggest inspiration as a kid. Yeah. Until probably about high school and college, then when Steph Curry started blowing up. I was like, wow, I mean, whatever, what he's doing on the court is amazing. And I still, uh, he still kind of shocks me to this day of how how great he is at basketball. It's quite unique, isn't it? The thing about Steph Curry is that he changed the game, didn't he? Like, you know, a lot of these great players have impact on the game within their existing style of play. But he changed the style of play for the league almost entirely. And for the world. <laughs> for, the, for the world, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a really good point. Hey, DJ, we're going to take a break. You're happy to stick around and uh, we might answer any questions from the listeners if they want to send us in a text message, 0457 736 736. You're listening to The Crossover. We're doing it with DJ Hogue today. Uh, Sydney Kings import who has yet to play his first game, but as we heard earlier, not too far away from returning from a shoulder injury. I'll tell you what, DJ, we'll take a break. Then we're back with more. Stick around. Big game against the Adelaide 36ers this Sunday. First home game of the season. So we've got the unfurling of the Premiership banner. Remember, get your tickets from Ticketek. So, DJ, we've got a question coming in. Uh, g'day, DJ. Uh, who is the team to beat in the NBL this year? That comes in from Phil. Um, I've heard a lot of hype around Melbourne this year, so we can just go with them. But uh, yeah, for okay. me, probably personally, it'll definitely be Cairns. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And Cairns, uh, uh, despite being in that small market that we talked about earlier, they, they bat above their weight, don't they? They're, they're always competitive. Yeah, definitely. But just between, since I played there last year, me and 40, of course, still talk, and me and Taj still talk. So, got it. we got to get them. Yeah, <laughs> you got to win those ones. Hey, you got a day off in Sydney. What would we find DJ Hogue up to? Um, at the beach, man. I, I live over there by it, so I'll be there. Yeah, wow. You got a favorite beach? Are you a surfer? Uh, I'm, I may learn. Uh, I got to first get my shoulder healthy, got to protect that. I may be a boogie boarder rather than a <laughs> surfer, but I may learn. Who knows? Okay. We well, just had in the break uh, 2 a.m. Tommy, Tommy Costigan, explaining the game of cricket to you, which is never, it's never easy explaining cricket to someone who's been here their whole life, no, no matter if they've just come from the U.S. What is the thing about Australia that you find most unique, That the, the strangest thing or the biggest difference to uh, the USA? Definitely driving on the other side of the road. <laughs> no question about it. Yeah, and right. doing the roundabouts on the other side of the road, it's a little tricky, but that's okay. the biggest difference. Well, you better give us the what sort of car you're driving, just so that listeners know, <laughs> just to give you a bit of a wide berth, right, when uh, when they see you. Hey, DJ, really appreciate you coming in, mate. All the very best for this season. We know we're going we're gonna to hear from you a lot. We're going to see you in action, which we can't wait. Good luck against the Jack Jumpers tomorrow, but, of course, against the 36ers on Sunday. I know you're not playing, but I know the whole organisation will be out there looking to put on a show for the fans. Appreciate your time today, mate. Yep, thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, our pleasure. DJ Hogue, uh, absolute star with the Cairns Taipans last year, and he's going to be a key player in the absence of Xavier Cooks this year for the Sydney Kings. one 300 1170 uh, Get us on the text line as well, 0457 736 736. We're going to get ourselves to a break. 